set down that TV remote, and strap up the overalls. We're talking paint today on Around the House with Eric G. Our paint expert, Robin Daly, will join the guys to talk about some tips and tricks to brighten up your home, such as whether or not to use primer before you paint. We'll also cover upcoming trends in color and let you know what's hot and what's not. All that and more right now on Around the House with Eric G. Welcome to Around the House with Eric G. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vauder. All right, we got a fun show ahead. But well, we always got a fun show ahead. But we got a great one coming up here with Robin Daly. She is our in house paint expert. We're going to dive into all of those paint questions that people need to know. We're coming into spring right now. And, you know, we had daylight savings time. I hope you changed and checked those smoke detectors. I don't want to see any more stories this year, by the way, of people bailing out of fires or. Houses burning down, people getting it killed or injured because of a nine volt battery. I, I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, I I I took down one that was beeping at me uh, about a week ago. Cool. But then I set my clock forward, and I'm like, oh, got to get that nine volt. Went and bought it, put it up, no problem. There we go. There we go. That simple. And if you don't have them, fix it. And while you're checking those batteries, check the build date on them because if it's over ten years old. That milk is overdue. Time to put new ones up. And then they're not that expensive. You just no. have to start grabbing new one. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's going to be cheaper than uh, the fire damage in your house and cheaper than your medical bills for smoke inhalation if one worked for you or even worse. And, and I don't care how good your insurance is. You're still going to pay. It's still going to suck. So, Whether you're losing stuff or whatnot, you're paying for it somehow. And these things are going to save your life. So uh, depend on them a little bit. And uh Make sure they're running for you. That's a simple one. So, hey, I want you to join us in the conversation. We're going to be talking with Robin Daly today, but I want you to call into the show, 503-521-7072. Leave your name and number. If you don't get us, we will call you back. So we had a couple calls last week that hang up, but uh, make sure you call in and you'll be in the show. So that's 503-521-7072. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, which is Around the House with Eric G., You'll see stuff all week long. It was a busy week this last week with a ton of stuff coming up there, as well as join our closed group with us around the house nation. Post those pictures up there. Post your painting stuff that you're doing up there. There's a lot of cool ideas and collaboration within that. And just kind of pairing what, what you have going on. If you say you're painting your kitchen or whatnot and how it compares with your cabinetry and your appliances, show it off. We'd love to see it. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of people up there that have been putting up questions and things like that. Hey, what do you think about this? And just kind of getting user comments from everybody else. And everybody plays really nice. So it's a, a good, safe place to share those projects and have some fun. One of the nice things, too, if you uh, like and follow us on Around the House with Eric G, is uh, we'll be bringing up later on with Robin Daly. There was a post that you put up uh, in the last couple weeks about this pink house. In Texas. Oh, that was crazy. I, I kind of just want to get her take on that. And yeah. Like, I mean, and, and, and of course, it's up to whatever anyone wants to do. And there's no homeowners association with this yeah. specific house. So no rules. It, uh, I just kind of want to get her take on that. It's an interesting one, you know. And so we'll, we'll dive into that question because that's a good one. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things with paint that, that makes it interesting because that technology keeps changing. So one of the questions I'm going to ask her coming up as well is what's the difference between like a... $25 gallon of paint and maybe a $75 gallon of paint. So those are things that I just want to make sure that we talk because who knows? I know. Most people don't know what the differences are. All on up to it, I don't. See? There you go. So those are fun things we're going to tackle in today's show. But uh, I want to give the phone number one more time because that other number doesn't work. This is our new number at 503 521 7072. Coming up in uh, future shows here, the next couple weeks, uh, we're going to bring some more guests in, but I want to dive into kind of a free-for-all in the next couple shows. I've got multiple subjects I want to dive into, from technology to some new products. I want to talk a little bit about uh, some concrete repairs and fix-it stuff. We're going to dive into a few of those subjects that we did on our poll earlier this year yeah. that you guys out there voted on and said. So I'm going to bring in, I've got a buddy that's going to come in, and he's a... Uh, trainer for the cement masons union so nice. he's going to come in and talk about concrete dips so we've got that i'm working on the garden stuff this this next week it's i'll have that nailed down so we're going to dive into some of those subjects that were really hot that you guys wanted us to, to dive into in 2019 
and we're still going to do it. So Also, I think uh, we might be touching a little bit just on spring cleaning. That is our spring checklist coming up, yep. and we'll uh, we'll put that up here and give you guys some notice on that one as well of what's coming up. But uh, the next week or st- week or two, I want to dive into some of this kind of uh, potpourri for a hundred, Alex, <laughs> and get these uh, and get some of these subjects knocked out because there's a ton of them that I want to hit in the spring, as well as I got some new garden tools that are getting shipped to me here this next week that are all battery powered, and I'm going to put them through the test. Okay, and I mean I'm talking like a lawnmower. I'm talking a, you know, a hedge trimmer. I'm talking all those different things. I'm going to see how well the battery holds up to the gas stuff. I was going to say, you check the power on that. Oh, I'm yeah. a little worried that you're not getting as much power out of the battery that you would have. We're going to find out. So, uh, I, you know, I like to test things for myself, and that's exactly what I want to do. So as soon as those things show up, I'm going to run some videos on it. So I'm going to share it with you guys out there as well, and I'm going to put it through the paces. So we're going to have some fun with some new power tools. So we've got a lot of things coming up here. So one more thing, too, I'm going to be doing a podcast that you're going to catch. You're going to look at me strange on this one. I'm doing a podcast uh, with 2020 that's going to be coming out here. 2020 is a design program. So this is going to be more for the interior designers out there. Okay. So I'm just doing one on the kind of the back end of a kitchen and bath business. So this is going to be on 2020's website. So if you see it on the podcast stuff, you're going to see it in there. Feel free to listen to it, but it's going to be kind of a design insiders podcast that you're going to see up on our page. So be prepared for that coming out as well. I was going to say, you, I imagine you'll be sharing that on the Facebook page. It'll be as on well, the right? Facebook page as well. And then uh, on the 24th, I believe it, I got to go back and take a look at that date, but I think that's right. I'm also doing a uh, virtual design thing for designers out there as well. So if you're an interior designer out there, go over to 2020 designs webpage. I'm doing a uh, a virtual type podcast with them. So it's going to be just a seminar online and I'm going to be talking about using virtual reality glasses in design process. So we're going to have some fun. You've been delving into that lately. Well, I have you been. went out to Boston. I know you were talking about Yeah. And I was doing stuff a little bit with 2020 out there and now uh, I'll be on that on their, uh, on their forum over there as well. So that'll be a full on class I'll be teaching there. And if you're an architect or designer or anything else, there's going to be all these CEUs you can get it to, which is a continuing education unit. So that's, kind of on the insider list of things that we've got going on with around the house nice what to expect and what's coming up yeah it's going to be a fun spring we got some cool stuff and then i just got my invitation as well to milwaukee Ooh, you so, got a big smile on your I got face my, right uh, yeah power tool or as i call with my friends out there this is construction summer camp so there you go i'll uh, let you guys in on the stuff that i can talk about after that but that's a couple months out so haven't even got the airplanes booked yet but we're getting there on but that you're one. excited <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> and I can go hang out with Skip and Allison and all those other friends of mine out there and, and uh, go play with power tools. So it'll be a good time. It's my little annual summer camp. So it'll be fun. Hey, join us in the conversation. 503 521 7072 is the new number here. 503 521 7072. But all right, well, I want to talk a little bit more about paint here, real quick. And one of the things that, that's important when we're talking paint is I want to make sure everybody out there, if you've got a house prior to 1979, even 1980, it's a good, because somebody could have used some older paint on it. Make sure you do your lead paint testing. So run on your paint store, any one of them. They've got that all ready to go where you can test all the surfaces you're going to be working on because I just don't want anybody getting sick or hurt from paint. This could hurt you, and that's lead paint. So make sure if you've got the older house out there that you're doing that, as well as, here's another key for you, make sure that when you dive into this is that if you're hiring somebody to do it, Make sure that they're lead paint certified because that is something that must be done if they're working on your house prior to 1978. That and back, you need to have that lead paint certified person working on that house. You know, there's a couple little rules with it, but it's always good to have somebody that can follow those best practices to make sure you keep it safe because nobody wants to have a sick house. We all want to have a healthy house. All right, we come back. Let's dive into our conversation with Robin Daly just as soon as Around the House returns. to Around the House with Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement every Saturday. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vodder. We're going to have a good time in here today, but I want you to give us a call in the studio. That number is 503-521-7072. That's 503-521-7072. We have in studio here, calling in, 
my favorite paint princess, paint expert, Robin Daly. Welcome to the show. Well, hi, guys. How are you? Doing good. They're having a great weekend. Excellent. We Excellent. are. <laughs> we got some good weather this weekend, which reminds me of spring. And I thought, what a great time I'm to ready. How about you? <laughs> oh, you know, we, no, you're you guys up there in Seattle have really gotten a lot more winter than we have down oh, here man. in the Portland area. So totally get it. You guys were shoveling snow here in most areas. In the Portland area, you know, I mean, we didn't have enough to even to get the shovel out with. No, it was just kind dusting. of dusting here and there. Or over in Tri Cities, you know, they got snow like they do in Bend. So, I mean, uh, we got, we dodged the bullet on the snow this year. So we did pretty good. Not sure I really want to hear that, Jeff. I know. It's- <laughs> I, I do think I realized one day I am now officially a grown up. And that is when it snowed and I wasn't excited about it. <laughs> Well, now we can start talking I've about entered adulthood. You have now we can actually start talking about how the snow matches your house and the colors of designing around that, so to make sure that those play together. Well, you know, I guess we could talk about that. Or how do you <laughs> how do you paint your house to blend with the smoke in August? Right? Ooh. The, um, there's all kinds of uh, interesting uh, factors of weather that um, we get to grapple with up here in this corner of the uh, map. <laughs> no kidding. And those are actually great topics. Well, I wanted to dive a little bit into kind of the basics, just of safety of doing a painting project, as well as even the most basic stuff like hanging around and and making sure that you haul the paint home correctly from the paint store. Because there's so many things that could go wrong with Ooh. this. So, so there's this thing called a paint lid. It's on your can. And unless you have a <laughs> screw top which is a whole nother discussion. <laughs> Sometimes those lids don't get pounded down a hundred percent. And then you throw it in your car, maybe in the wheel well area of the front seat, or you pop it on the back seat. Fingers crossed. You're not putting it on the seat itself because <laughs> stomp on the brakes one time and you've painted the <laughs> interior of your car. But oh. yes. So having a box just to stabilize everything Super easy to do, and it catches spilled paint. Yeah, and it keeps you from flying around for that guy that cuts you off on the way home from the paint store, and at least keeps it maybe upright. Gives a whole new uh, uh, image to road rage, doesn't it? It does, especially if you've got your favorite color now splashed across your entire interior, including the (laughs) tens of thousands of dollars of electronics and whatever else, clothing, (laughs) and whoever else is in the car. That's right. I mean, um, many of us have leather interiors, and I Mm -hmm. can't even. I just can't even. But how can you continue to have road rage? Save yourself a hassle and just put it in a box. It's that simple. How can you say, how could you continue to have road rage, though, if you look over and a guy is just covered in fuchsia paint? Well, you kind of have to laugh. Well, you know, that's that's the opportunity for a meme, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Well done. Well done. Let's talk a little bit about safety here with paint because, you know, people go in and just dive into a project and maybe they're not thinking about lead. Maybe they're not thinking about all the different things that can go wrong on a paint project. I mean, we've all seen the people that have gone out there, started scraping the outside of their old house and diving into that spring project. And then some neighbor gives a call to the local agency. And then you got people crawling all over, making a big deal about the lead paint. Thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. In fact, um, about 20 years ago, uh, some neighbors of mine were repainting their house and they, the painters were scraping the chipped paint off the siding. Mm -hmm. And the retired neighbor, she grabbed her lawn chair and sat and watched them to make sure not one chip drifted over into her side of the property. Uh, They do, nowadays, there are kits that you can buy for not very much money. I'm sure under $15 that are lead test kits. Yep. And you can test your home to see if it has uh, lead paint. If your home was built after, oh, I think it's the early 70s, uh, paint was not manufactured with lead anymore. So it's really our older homes that we want to be concerned about. And if you do have lead, 
then the whole key is to either remove it by a licensed, trained contractor who has the correct equipment, Mm -hmm. or you encapsulate it. Which just means you're going to paint over the top of it, correct. And I think the cutoff date for the the lead paint renovators is 1978. So anything after 78... um, Is it that late? I thought it was 72, but you could be correct. Yeah, at least down here in in Oregon, I know it is. And I think it's a new federal one that they made that 78. They couldn't produce paint after 78 was the final do not make date. So anything before that... You know, so I always tell people just because but you don't know was, what they use. I would used. say that was the last gas time too. It was. So, um, you know, the cutoff even before the cutoff, it was highly doubtful that paint had lead in it. But the fifties and earlier, that's that's where I get super nervous. One thing I noticed here in the Portland area is because depending on the nicer paints, the better quality paints had the most lead in it. So I noticed that the higher-end neighborhoods and the nicer paint stores back in the 50s and 60s when that lead paint was a big thing and it was the best paints, when they sold those and did a great job, you find it more in that area versus somebody using the cheap paint, quite frankly, back then didn't have lead in it. Well, guess what? (laughs) Lead is an excellent preservative. So your paint job would last longer. And I even, I have vintage ads from that time that talk about the benefits of lead paint because it would chalk off the dirt. (laughs) Well, that chalking off, as you can imagine, is the lead being exposed to the air. That makes sense. Let's talk about a little more of that. Let's talk a little bit more of that. Let's let's hit that when we come back here from break because I want to talk a little bit about that and some interior design stuff like asbestos just as soon as Around the House returns. So Eric G. This is where we talk home improvement every single Saturday afternoon. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vodder. Got to have some fun here playing some of my old music again. Absolutely. My old band in Seattle landing out and rocking out with this the last couple shows, having a good time with it. So we're going to keep throwing in different music every single week. Hey, check us out on Facebook, Around the House with Eric G. Or just type in at ETH. KXL, and that'll get you the shortcut there, as well as check out the Instagram, Twitters, all those different things that we're on social media everywhere. And if you missed part of this, you're out running around today, don't worry. It's all over the uh, interweb out there where you can find podcasts. So almost everybody's listened to a podcast now. So if you missed it, don't worry. Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, anywhere you want to find it, you'll find it right there. Also, if you find yourself wanting a little bit more around the house, and uh, uh, we've got plenty of episodes to go back and listen to. Yeah, I think that I, I looked at it. It's 470 of them, I, I think, right now. I know we're getting close to 500, and that's we one are. that I am uh, keeping my eye on. Yeah, definitely. So, hey, let's welcome back Robin Daly. Welcome back to the show. Hey, how's it going? Excellent. Well, let's keep talking about paint, because when we were just talking about lead paint and when I had to run out to break, you were talking about how that added lead was durable, and then people started to, well, advertise that it was durable. That was a one of the features and benefits. It was sold as a positive thing. Kind of like asbestos. Think about that with all of our new technology. I wonder what we're going to look back on in the future and go, oh. <laughs> well, I mean, you can see I've got magazines at home from like old Women's Day ads of the 60s, and it's Armstrong flooring with added asbestos for extra durability. And now that added asbestos nice. is uh, making us tear it yeah. out. But I think we'll have some of that with building yeah. materials out there. I think you're going to see someday someone's going to go after fiberglass insulation, because that stuff will hurt your yeah. lungs. I mean, there's there's stuff out there that they haven't dove into yet that I think will still come around and be a problem in the future. So, well, let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite subjects, paint color trends right now, because we are in the world of color as I see it. Well, Eric, I know that you just were at a big kitchen and bath show, and I was just at a large interior design show down in Las Vegas, and... It's hard not to pay attention to the color trends. It's wild out there. I love it. 
I think uh, the it, it's an interesting thing with the speeding up of information. You know, I was listening to you say that you're available on the interwebs and on podcasts, and, and I was like, wow, that boy gets around. But then I was like, you know, information is so available to us. So it's not just a secret that somebody like you or I keeps. It's, it's out there for all of us to have access to and to pay attention to. Um, and I think the, the, the things like Instagram, where having a super clean background makes beautiful photography, has also mm-hmm. influenced color trends. Sure. I don't know what you think. You know, it's funny because I was, I was out teaching in Boston early in February and I was talking to lumberyard owners about their kitchen and bath departments. And one of the comments that I made to them as a group in my keynote speech that I did was, you know, home and garden TV, Instagram, DIY network has replaced what most people did 20 years ago with magazines. And the problem with magazines oh, were. Sure. You do a project, it would get completed. Four months later, a crew would come out and take the photography. It would go back to the magazine, and maybe a year later, that trend would show up in the latest magazine. And so you had a year cycle of just from the color getting from the project to the people. And now it's happening the day the paint goes on the wall with Instagram. And I think trends are changing. It used to be, oh, this is a three- or four-year trend, and now we're seeing a 24-month trend maybe? That that could be, and I know that what my own reaction to that is as a designer is, I'm like, I, I want something that has a little longer shelf life Correct. for the work that I do and for the people that I serve. So I certainly pay attention to the trends, and I think you have to use your editor's eye mm-hmm. to decide what is that short term trend and that could be super duper fun too. So maybe I use that with an accent piece that I don't care about after two years. I'm just going to recycle it versus uh, installing flooring or cabinetry, which that's, that's almost like a marriage in terms of the length of commitment that you're looking at. So you want to, you want to find things that have both uh, an evergreen uh, aspect to them or that live outside of trends, but you can still play with trends. You know, it's really true with that. I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, when you put flooring down or you put cabinetry in or countertops down, you're kind of making a 15 year commitment to that and you better hold That's right. up. I mean, seriously, some marriages last, don't last that long. Mine haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> so, so you, you want to date your floor for a while, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so that's the key with that. And that's where I think you come in with the paint because paint is your 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 most cost-effective way to change that color and style in there. So if you design the rest of your house where you can change things with styles with, with paint colors, you're ahead of the game with that. That's true, that's true. And oftentimes... Paint is one of the last things we choose. Like, uh, we we go to the paint store first and foremost. I am ready to make a change. And so you race down to the paint store or the paint department, and you pick out all these chips, and then you realize, oh, I have to make all these other decisions first. Because paint is, is easy to adjust. We can nudge a color a little more blue or tone it down a little bit or brighten it up, but... The flooring that's available is the what's on the market, sure. or you, you know that that countertop, whatever quartz you have to choose from, are the quartz options you have. You're not going to go be an alchemist and go to the point of manufacturer <laughs> and ask them to sprinkle in a couple more sparkles. <laughs> oh, some companies will do it, but you're paying a you're pretty paying penny. A, pay a pretty that's penny for true. that one, so. Everything's that's possible, true. but it's not cost effective at that point. And so, but you're right. right. And, and that's where I think even with wallpapers coming back in that have been, they've been creeping back in more and more over the last five years. There's a lot of cool things out mm-hmm. there to add color to your life. I love it. I love it. When I first started um, playing with wallpaper, we were selling country geese and little <laughs> tiny, what, what we call bitty prints. They were little dots. Yep. 
and they were paper baked brown and navy blue and cream. Like those were the hot <laughs> colors. <laughs> and rust. Oh yeah. That was but big you know, back then. If you look speaking of color of the year, Sherwin Williams came out with their color of the year, which was like clay dust or something mm-hmm. like that. Which is just like rust that you added a little half and half to. It so <laughs> the things are cyclical. They really are, and, sure. I, and I've been having a tough time, and it took me a long time. It probably took me over a year with the brushed brasses and stuff that have come back over the last three or four years now. That first six months to a year, I had to really let go of some what I called okay. brass Can bitterness we, to hold do that. It, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Just a second. I am renovating a home that was built in the early 90s. Yep. So right now, I'm living through this. There is brass crap everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> and the you know the jetted tub has this prominent br- shiny brass yep. faucet and handles and and ugh, it's like, <laughs> it's like it, nothing dates you like that decorative hardware and and the the faucets and the fixtures and the fittings and so you know, I'm going to ask you guys, what do we do about that? That That is something that I'm really curious about. So maybe I should get some sandpaper or some etching material and dull it down. Right? You know what, you know what I've done? On, I'm like, oh, I got that's a secret. millennial gold. <laughs> I've got a secret for you on this stuff. I have done this in the past. I have taken that stuff out if the fixtures are really awesome. I've taken the pieces and parts out and gotten them powder coated and put a, a brushed finish or something mm. on them without having to go through and I spend am, the time on it. I love that. I am kind of digging the black. Yeah, so go so. powder coat it matte black. That's super cost effective compared yeah. to more expensive stuff. All right, we come back. Let's talk more paint colors. I'm chatting with Robin Daly just as soon as Around the House returns. This is where we talk home improvement. I'm Eric G. I'm Dane Vaughn. We're rocking out. We're rocking out. Fortune sun here. Exactly. We're having a good time this Saturday afternoon. I hope you are, and thanks for joining us. If you're just joining us, we're talking paint this afternoon, and if you missed it, don't worry. It's all out on the interweb on any one of your favorite podcast networks out there. You can ask Alexa to play it. You can listen to it on SoundCloud. You can catch it on Spotify, wherever you're out there. That's where you can catch it. Real easy. Just search up Around the House with Eric G, and you'll find it right there. If you want, download the whole 400 and something, 470 episodes, and you can listen to it even back on the Wayback Machine. Also, so. we want to make sure to get your phone calls uh, here at uh, 503-521-7072. Uh, give us a call. Leave us a message. We'll call you back uh, whenever works for you, and we'll get you in the show. Yeah, so let's do that. Well, let's welcome back Robin Daly. Welcome back to the show. Well, hi, gentlemen. <laughs> well, hey, let's talk a little bit about, this is one of the subjects I think that is confusing people with paint out there because almost every brand seems to have this primer and paint all in one. This will do everything magical, but these paint companies still make primers. So I think there's a lot of confusion out there of what do you do with primer and what do you do with paint? Well, that is an excellent question. And it has to do with paint technology. So how to explain to people what modern day paints do. They do something called self-sealing. So that's where the primer terminology comes in, where you put the first coat on, and if you have patched areas, it soaks in a little extra. It looks like flat areas, Mm -hmm. but you put that second coat of paint on and it self-seals or it adheres to itself and it forms a very tight chemical bond. So they call it paint and primer in one, but that's not, it should be paint and primer in one if all you're doing is repainting a kid's bedroom, (laughs) like a huge Uh, asterisk. There and any go. other situation that has uh, challenging um, circumstances, 
guess what? You're still going to need primer. Otherwise, why would they be making primer? Because there are situations uh, you may have old oil paint Ugh. trim in your house. It's awesome. And it holds you up. you need to... What was that? It's awesome. It holds up. It's a solid paint. Oh, yeah. And and oil paint continues to get harder and harder and harder as it ages. That's why it gets brittle over time. Mm -hmm. So when you go to repaint and you don't want to bring in the kind of odor or the challenges that oil paint brings with it, you want to do a water cleanup, low odor, new technology product, it's not going to adhere correctly to the old surface, so you need a primer. Or let's say you've moved into a house and it's been 35 years and you look at the hallway and you can see where the kids growing up in the house over the over time have like run their hands against across <laughs> the wall like there's a dark gray cloud or the dog's tail has hit the same spot yep. for, you know, 25 years or the cat rubs against the corner and is marking space or you have oily fingerprints around light switches, or mm -hmm. you're in a... I mean, the, the list can go on and on and on in uh, terms of why you might need primer. You know, so the best that, thing to do is, if you're going to be doing a DIY project and painting it yourself, you definitely want to talk to your paint supplier about your specific situation so that they can kind of work with you and decide... What what are the right prep steps? And nobody likes to talk about prep. That is not sexy at <laughs> all. It's not fun. But the reward is you're going to get a much more attractive paint job that will last infinitely longer. So I, I saw on one of the DIY forums that I'm on on Facebook that I comment on from time to time, I saw somebody that had gone through and decided to paint their own kitchen not knowing, I think, that somebody had pre-painted it in the in the history of the house with latex. And so they've hit it with a coat of white oil based over the top of it. And what an absolute mess that created. Because it was really? over the latex. And I don't know what all the, the things that had done, but they had put late they had put oil over the latex and it released the latex underneath it and created one giant sticky ball of mess. So it was pretty crazy. Ugh. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to dive into some fun paint stories, as well as taking your questions just as soon as Around the House returns.